welcome back to episode 4 of Namibia Untamed. It's D-Day and we left our camp, heading for the infamous Van Sales Pass, situated in the northwestern corner of Kalkoland. From the top of the pass to the bottom is about 10 kilometers. And if you think that this will take you a few hours, think again. The pass was originally built by Ben Van Sale and his team of 20 men. It took them four months to complete the road. And if you ask me, I still feel they haven't finished it. Where are we off to? So today we are doing the Van Sales Pass, the legendary, the notorious Van Sales Pass. So, what was that all about? That bit that I just got on film now. It's the start of a coffee station. <laughs> a coffee and bagel station. Yeah. I swear. the first part. <laughs> but there are all these goat tracks up the mountain. We can see them crisscrossing. Hey Chris. Yeah. Hey Da. Yeah Da. Chris. <laughs> crisscrossing. <laughs> crisscrossing the terrain. We would both like to say a special thank you to everyone who has watched previous episodes. Liked, commented and subscribed to our channel. It's heartwarming to see how our merry band of followers are growing. So without further ado, fasten your seatbelts and enjoy the ride. our homework. We had read up about the pass, chatted to people, watched YouTube videos and all I can say is that none of it can prepare you for the route. Um, this is apparently the, the most tricky part of the, the pass. So it's always good just to get out of your car, go take a walk, have a look, assess the situation and then at least you know what you're in for. This is just to illustrate where we've driven. I mean, it's mad, it's not even a road. There's Christoph, who did this amazing driving down here, just absolutely phenomenal. This is kind of the terrain. I, there's no way you can ever capture just how, how radical this road is. But he's down there now and we've got to just keep going that direction but we had the fire extinguisher ready there both had radios and as you can see some other poor souls not that lucky and all i can say is I'm really happy I didn't see this. Gadong again. This one? This is nothing. Oh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you were like you on the outside. No, fuck I, I was in the capsule. <laughs> <laughs> if the capsule flipped, I would have gone with it. No, don't say that. Don't say that. It's not funny. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> So there were tears, there were nerves, there were white knuckles 
And there was a very, very, very close to a vomit, <laughs> but we made it. Yeah, we made it down uh, Fancel's Pass. It was extremely rutted. I don't think many people have come through here in a while since the rains. So um, it, there's been very little maintenance on the route. And uh, yeah, the last downhill section, tricky all the gnarly, way. Gnarly, gnarly, gnarly. Well, we spent the better part of the day um, cruising 11Ks. And in the background. Yeah. Ta -da. Ta -da. The hero of the show. The hero of the show. And yeah. then the second so. hero of the show goes to. Wait. <laughs> One, two, three. <laughs> Marian Fluss Conservancy lies at the extreme northwest of the Kunene region. These vast stretches of grassland are both desolate and dramatic, with wide open plains, dunes and rocky outcrops. We have seen it in 2018 after heavy rainfalls, when it was lush with soft green grasses and fairy circles. This time, however, there was a drought and the land looks unforgiving and deserted. The area that makes up the valley covers 3,304 square kilometers and is home to less than 350 of the indigenous Himba people. Normally the land would provide grazing for their goats and cattle and surrounding wildlife, but the drought has laid waste to this and people are hungry and livestock and game is scarce. So scarce that we literally traveled the whole day before encountering one vehicle on the way to Camp Synchro further north. So we enjoy the majestic landscapes and tackle the bad corrugations on the snaking tracks in the direction of Marble Camp. Well, this is the doggy that came last night when we were brying. And she stayed with us the whole night. And um, at four o'clock this morning, she let us know that there was something out there. We bought a whole lot of Millie pups so that we could feed people that really needed it. But this morning the dogs were the recipients. But yes, I mean it's just it's crazy how how dire the effects are of this epidemic. So yeah, so I don't know when those dogs at the camp will get their next meal. But they're certainly lying there. They're lying in a carb coma right now. <laughs> say our goodbye. Is not here the one doggy? Yes. Oh yeah, he's got to say goodbye. <laughs> not so much a carb coma. Bye bye my boy. Bye. Bye bye. See you next time. Okay. See you next time. Outlook on this trip has been that it's uh, become more of a humanitarian problem. Um, our social conscience is um, highlighting the fact that people out here are starving, including their animals. Okay, we are cruising across the Ochiha Plains to get to the Kumib River. What it looks like out here. Okay, we're in the Kumi River bed now. Um, just entered it. And, uh, we're going to be driving along here until we connect with the Huarisip River. The mysterious, remote, lone men of the Kauko land evoke more questions than answers, like who makes these sculptures, and why do the sculptures seem so purpose-built for each landscape? Each sculpture is different in form and placement. The artist has taken great trouble to place them in remote locations spanning the entire wilderness of the Kauko land. There are supposedly 27 lone men of which we only spotted three on this trip. 
we take comfort in knowing that this region has so many more unknown hidden secrets. It's a typical Himba settlement. Nobody here. No tourism. Heading there. We have a bit of a situation at the moment. So Christoph is busy letting the tight pressure down. Okay. Yeah. We need the highlight jack. Can I get it out to them? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Let's dig around. I took the spade out. Uh, around the front of it. Yeah. Okay. I think there's a bit of a suction, a vacuum. That boy can come out now. So we're going to repeat the repeat. performance on the other side. On the other side. So this is what the other side looked like. We managed to resolve it to a large degree and now we're going to try the same. Yeah. Place out the way. I'm not going down. It's going down. Is it going down? No, it's not. No. One hour later. It's just like lifting the car every time. It's this thing. I need some Q20. Where will I find it? It's in the back and we can't get in the back. And a sip of water. It's on the front bumper. Oh, there we go. Uh, what do you say? What? Hello, fucking hallelujah. Yeah. Oh, fucking need a new. Need a new fucking. You're not meant to fail, you mechanical piece of shit. <laughs> uh, there's one step. Yes. Nothing like a Chinese spade to make things right. So this is a high lift. Jack fail. Okay, so this is the point. Fingers, toes, everything crossed. And I hope like hell when I work has a week day.
five hours later. Sandstorms, the most incredible cloud set. I missed that. And once again, give in hope that it works this time. this video, click the like and subscribe button. It's a free way to support us. Relieved, more relieved because there's some tricky clouds out there upstream. And if you want to support us on Patreon, oh, come on, guys, be a darling, buy us a packet of chips or some bultong.